Hello, you are at All The Feels, and I am Patricia Angelin at Alba Technique, and let me turn this camera around, and we can see, if not each other, you can see me. And um, today for All The Feels, um, a, a question actually came in earlier today, and the querent um, said, my husband is not talking to me. And of course, the reasons for that could be legion. But she, I said, well, how does that make you feel? She says, it makes me feel frustrated. It makes me, uh, and when I looked into his eyes, he looked, he said, I can't talk to you. I can't talk to you about this. I'm overwhelmed. And I said, and what did you see when you looked into his eyes? And she said, I saw that he looked from what you've taught me at Alba Emoting, kind of slightly panicked and maybe hurt. And so I said, all right, dear Querent. Um, not, you know, getting into what is a very complicated situation for you, uh, the complications of which only you know, and I am she who does not know all of the complications, but I can offer you a little bit about um, feelings with some people. And this does seem to be a limbic, primitive reactivity that, that very, very many males have. Very many men will get emotionally overloaded. And when a guy, the, that particular guy is emotionally overloaded, it kind of it doesn't even matter what the emotion is. Uh, they get to a certain level, the individual gets to a certain level and he's just not able to talk about it. And what do we women want to do? We want to discuss it. We want to talk. Talk to me. Talk to me. <laughs> you know? And then we've got all this, this um, husband-wife emotional reactivity going, you know, like a ping pong ball going back and back and forth and back and forth. Um, I'm recalling uh, thinking of my own father, who is now deceased. Very wise man, eminent physician, um, a guy with a lot of psychological knowledge, a lot of understanding of people, and yet an extremely highly emotional guy. And um, my mother taught me that if I wanted to talk to dad about anything, I couldn't spring anything on him. And now with all my neuro knowledge of how the human limbic system works, I now realize that what was happening with my dad was that he would get emotionally reactive to whatever it was that the other person, in this case me, wanted to discuss. So I had to make sure that I didn't spring anything on him, not too suddenly, when he'd just come in from something else, that would be one, that he had food in his belly, that would be number two. So he wasn't hungry, he wasn't thirsty, so I wouldn't get a hangry, you know, hungry, angry, you know, response. And, um, and to realize that I might just need to give him a little more time to come down from having been in the office and having to function in that particular, in a different mode, and in his case, it would be doctor mode, but it could be a person who's a social worker in social worker mode, or a lawyer mode, or, you know, even me in working with other people's emotions mode, that I had to come back in in order to be able to have a different type of discussion. So um, this limbic reactivity, if you have um, a beloved uh, male friend, spouse, whatever, and this is a way that this individual um, reacts, 
you're insisting that he speak to you, that he just talk to you, that, you know, this is important, and why is he running away from the discussion? It's only going to make the overwhelm more. It's going to make it more. You would be much better off to look at your own feelings about how the person who isn't talking to you is, and taking a breath and handling that, you know, you want to be heard and you want to speak. But pushing it and pushing it and pushing it is going to make it worse. So what you want to do is affirm the other person in how he is functioning, or she, because some women have this as well, um, how, how he or she is, is functioning in this moment. And when you observe the overwhelm, because you know this is a beloved person, you know this person, when you observe the overwhelm, take a deep breath and go, you are really wonderful. And I thank you so much for supporting me in fill in the blank, whatever it is you're doing. Then give that person a hug or give that person a kiss and somehow, or, or pat them on the back and go, um, my father would have gone, oh, such a good girl. You know, even something as silly and simple, you know, to have a laugh is fine. Anything that's going to break the current, um, golly, what word do I want? The current um, cycle of the feelings that that person is having limb limbically, which is giving him or her the overload. Because if somebody is an overload, they're afraid the mind spirals all over the place. The mind cannot grasp the very thing that the other person wants to discuss, wants to talk about. And so you need to help the person on, who's on overload. Now, if that's you and you're the one who goes on overload and can't make the quick mental switch that the partner, beloved person, friend makes, you take a breath and you communicate, you know, I know that what you're saying is important. I simply can't talk about it right now because I'm on overload. I'm just on overload. I'm feeling overwhelmed right now. And there's nothing you can do about that for me. So let's, let's shelve it for now. And we absolutely I agree with you. Important, important, important. But I'm just, right now, it's just not going to be a good time. I'm not running away from it. We will talk about it, but not right now. Let's go and weed the yard, or go for a run, or take a nap, or make some dinner, or something that isn't the talking about the thing. So that is what I would recommend to you, Querent, who is asking me, what do I do about my husband when he's feeling overwhelmed and I just want him to talk to me and tell me what he's feeling? He's feeling too much. And the part of his brain that deals with the words to describe the feelings that he's having, my querent, is not accessible to him when he's an overload. I mean, it's literally a brain thing. It's not that he's not, he's choosing not to talk to you. It's not that he doesn't want to talk to you. I mean, that's how he processes it. I can't, I won't, no. But that's because of the overwhelm. So it's not a choice for him. And so you need to look at yourself, Querent, and say, I have an expectation of this beloved person that he is unable to meet for me. It's not his fault. It's not my fault. I'm not doing something wrong. In this case, the querent is a woman. I am a woman who wants to speak, be heard, and talk, and relationally discuss something. Now, that is a very beautiful feminine way of dealing with things. And sometimes our husbands just aren't able to do that. And browbeating him for the way, the primitive way and very masculine way that his mind works, which is when an overload, the words won't be there for him to talk to you about this. When the overwhelm is a little bit calmed down, you know, with food, with drink, with a walk, with a run, with a weightlifting, with a you know, playing with a dog, you know, fill in the blank. You guys have, since you are in relationship querent, you both have to help each other figure out what that is. There's nothing wrong with you. 
there's nothing wrong with him and you are not being rejected just because he won't won't talk to you so i hope that that answers that question on i'm feeling overwhelmed and i can't talk about it or my beloved person is overwhelmed and he won't talk to me about it i hope that answers the question you are at all the feels and I am feeling good at having talked to you about that. <laughs> Isn't that silly? Thank you so much for being with me. And I will be here same time, different channel. It will be Instagram Live next week at 5 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, I think it is right now. Yeah, we're still in the summer. So thank you so much for joining me. Do comment if you would be so kind. Uh, ask a further question, ask for clarification, uh, take a look at any of the at Alba Technique on the YouTube channel of Alba Technique and see if, if anything excites a question in you about your feelings or the feelings that you observe in people at work or people at home or just people over time because we've all got emotions and we've all got feelings. And we all have to deal with them, and we have to help each other deal with them to the best of our abilities. And I am here to help. So thank you so much for being with me. And I will be hoping to be able to be with you next week. Bye-bye.